What's up, YouTube fam? Oh, I had to shift there. But uh, I know it's been a week since I made a video. The weather's been honestly, honestly crappy and not good for anything. Um, rain, snow, cold. We finally have nice weather. 60 degrees outside. Weather is great. Let's see if I can drive stick here. Talk. Oh yeah, left-handed stick. Oh, bang, perfect. Truck's doing great. You know, we got 1,800 mile, 800, 1,890 miles on it so far. It's a little dirty, got a little dusty today. So here we go, another stop sign. All right, we're moving again. Sorry, I keep four-way intersection and oh, this giant camera and uh, driving stick and all. A little much. I need to get my G7X back uh, tonight. I'm gonna, when I'm editing this, I'm gonna send that. Uh, out for uh, repair because I, I know I've, that's been a problem for like a year now. But um, today I'm going to go over a, a question that you know that you guys should consider when you're looking for trucks. Uh, I say I'm not sponsored by Dodge or Ram or Cummins for that matter, but uh, one day I hope I am. I'm, I'm going to be honest. So today I'm talking about why I picked Dodge, Ram, Cummins, Fiat, Chrysler, Mopar, whatever you know branch you see it as, is my choice of truck. And for me, the answer is simple. And for all you people out there that are gonna say, oh, he talks too much, ramble, blah, 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 blah. Short, simple, to the point, my number one reason is I like to work on my own trucks. If you, you're the guy, buys a truck, boom, I'm gonna take it to the dealership for all my work, everything that needs to be done, oil changes, so forth, even the simplest things. Pick your brand, Chevy, Ford, Dodge, uh, but short, simple, to the point, I like to work on my own trucks, that's why I pick Ram. The electrical, the wiring in these trucks, and uh, even down the line, all makes sense. The placement of things on the body, the chassis, all make sense most of the time. The only thing I, the only thing I don't give Dodge, the rear shocks and the 1500 front differential kind of suck to get out. But other than that, everything is pretty straight. Here, I'm gonna show you guys videos right now. I'm gonna run them on the screen. I'm gonna run through the Power Stroke. I'm gonna run through the Duramax, and I'm gonna run through the Ram. So I'm gonna roll those clips now. And this goes back to, I like to work on my own truck. I like doing my own mods, doing any work I need to, fuel filters, all that and such on my own truck. Look at these pictures, the Chevy and the Ford. You can't even tell me what's going on in that engine. They are clusters. There is stuff going everywhere. There's tubes, intercooler pipes, air intakes. There is stuff, wiring harnesses everywhere thrown on top of the engines. They are messy. Ooh, look at how bright it is without the tint. So those engine compartments you see in the Chevy and the Ford are all messy. Look at the Ram. The engine goes from here to here. It's an inline six. That's my first thing I honestly like about it. Sure, it's not a V8, just like the Power Stroke in the Duramax, but with a six cylinder putting out Similar numbers. Cummins used to be the champion for the uh, the torque specs and everything, but I think Ford has 
since outdone them. But now, with an inline six, six cylinders compared to eight, Cummins is pushing similar and at once better numbers than the Power Strokes and the Duramaxes. That's incredible for six, for missing two cylinders. Second of all, look at this engine compartment. Engine goes from here to here. You know, what do you need to work on? Oil change? There. Check your engine oil. Like EGR cooler, accessible. Intake horn, throttle valve, all accessible. Pipes go in the intercooler, accessible. Your belts, your fans, you can see everything. There's a lot of room in here to work. And some people are gonna be like, oh man, you know, you got a lot of space in there. You can fit a lot more stuff. Like I said, this truck has nuts, and it, it's pushing similar, if not better, numbers than Power Strokes. This compact, six in a row, and everything's accessible. Fuel filter, can't really see it, right there. I can stick my hand in there and get it. Everything is accessible. It's very clean, very tidy, not a mess. Another reason I picked these trucks is because you have options. When I say options, I mean the most critical options, like suspension and transmission. In these Rams, the 2500, you will not find a better ride, I promise you. Even in the 1500, the 15 and 2500, you will not find a better ride in a pickup. This four link rear suspension, which means it's got coils and control arms. If, you, if you're test driving trucks trying to find out <clears throat> whether you should buy Chevy, a Ford, or a Ram, test drive a 2500 if you're looking for a heavy duty truck. Test drive one. If you're looking for a normal truck, you know, 1500, test drive a Ram 1500. The ride is uncomparable with those with the rear four link, and it's the only truck doing it. Ram is the only truck. So let's say you're you're in the market for a Ford or a Chevy. You're specking out your truck, building it. Oh, you start with the Chevy. You know, you start with the F2, F3, or 25, 3500 HD. You pick your Duramax, your Power Stroke, and that's it. That's it. That's what you get. You get a Duramax with the Allison transmission. Or you get the Power Stroke with Drawing a blank here, yeah, you get the 6R140, apparently, that's what I found online first, so if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. You're stuck with that transmission. In a Ram, are you gonna be, you know, tuning your truck, building your truck? Well, you can pick the 68 RFE or the uh, G56 if you're gonna be tuning and, you know, building it. If you're gonna be hauling, you know, heavy and not really modifying the truck at all, you can go with the Ison, an old timer who likes to shift gears. You can go with the G56. You want to blow up your tranny, you know, first time you tune it without any uh, extra work done. You can pick the 68 RFE. <laughs> Little joke there, but Ram has options. Um, the 68 RFEs and the um, Ison transmissions are actually very good until you add power. Once you add power, the Ison can't be tuned, but the 68 RFE can. You tune that thing, you can shred it. Uh, same thing with the G56 tune it too much and you will slip the clutch clearly because these trucks are made for the torque this engine puts out already and that's incredible but um my thing is you're keeping it stock you've got options you you're gonna tune it build it up put money in your transmission you have options other brands don't have that my next point is value the value of these trucks and the value you get in these trucks for the price is unbeatable. XLT, Super Duties, or I don't even know if they're LT or LS, whatever, LS, uh, Chevys. You look at, you know, base, middle, you know, your high-end Chevys and Fords, and you cannot match what Ram puts into their trucks. Now, this is a big horn. I went to the dealership originally looking at a Laramie, um, which is, you know, the higher-up model. This big horn has everything the Laramie has except leather push button start and even some Laramies don't even come with push button start so you can get it in the Laramie is what I'm saying leather cooled seats push button start and possibly a sunroof depending on how you option out your Laramie so I'm getting a fully loaded truck you know except leather cooled seats essentially are the only two standard options in one package up two options is the only thing different between this package and the upper package so everything is kind of bunched together price-wise on these trucks. And they are priced extremely well for what you get in them. Like I said, this truck's fully loaded. Let me show you. Power everything, power locks, power mirrors, heated mirrors, auto headlights, luxury group with the giant LCD dash, the 8.4 inch Uconnect display, heated seats, heated steering wheel, 
exhaust brake, front and rear parking sensors, dual climate control, shift on the fly 4x4, it's that premium cloth, dimming mirror, home link, and obviously a whole bunch of other features thrown into the electronics and you know like hill assist, stuff like that, everything's thrown in, you know, under the standard package, but this truck is fully loaded except leather and cooled seats. You just can't beat the value of these trucks. That Cummins engine is a power house. You're not gonna have any trouble doing anything. I know there are some tests out there of, you know, Fords out pulling these, uh, you know, loads and the hills and stuff like the Diesel Brothers and stuff do. I know there's video out there. I'm not, and here's the thing. I'm not saying Ford suck. I'm not saying Chevy suck. They are nice trucks. But in my opinion, the value you get from this, the ride with the suspension, the ability to choose different options for transmission um, and suspension, stuff like that. Oh, for that matter, <laughs> as I add to that, and not only can you get coils, leafs, you can also get rear air suspension on these trucks. Come on, man. There are so many options to outfit this truck and build it the way you want. Ram is pretty much saying, here's the keys, sit in the driver's seat. Built the way they should be, built the way you want them to be. And for that matter, look at this too. 100% workable. You can do anything you want to this truck. Everything's accessible. And that's why I choose these trucks. Because with the Cummins engine and how these trucks are made, there is no competition at all whatsoever between these trucks. Like I said, there are videos of Fords out pulling, and by that I mean pulling, you know, the load up the hill faster by, you know, a few seconds, whatever. I am more than willing to give up a few seconds on pulling, you know, 17,000 pounds up a mountain and to give up transmission options, all this luxury, the ability to work on my own truck just for a few few seconds, you know, a few seconds of towing heavy loads. These trucks will pull anything. I've seen people pull 30,000 pounds with these Rams. And if it's going to pull it just a hair slower, but I get so much more out of it with the, you know, rear suspension options, transmission options, comfortability in the cab. Ram is hands down, hands down the winner. They hold their value as well. The Cummins motor, they'll hold their value. Personal, I've, this is my second one. I had an 06 and now I have a 17. Um, you won't be disappointed. And you know, there's some of the best trucks on the market. I want to say thank you guys for watching with you know the weather getting nicer here. I've got I got my wheels. I've got my brand of tires picked out. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is you know the, the exact size I want to go. Uh, lift kit is pretty much picked out. That will be going on very shortly. So if you haven't been here before, get down there, click subscribe, shoot me a like. If you enjoyed this video and you think Rams are some of the best trucks out there. If not, just leave me your opinion in the comments as why. And like I said, Fords and Chevys, they aren't bad trucks. I just think the value and options you get with this truck and the ability to work on it yourself. So much easier is more than enough to give up a few, you know, seconds of pulling up a hill. Talk them value-wise here with these trucks. So I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't been here before, please click subscribe. Take care. Have a nice day.